Hello everyone, I'm Esmeralda Padilla Gold and welcome to Vegas Vibes. On Vegas Vibes, I'll be featuring amazingly talented people from many walks of life who contribute to making Las Vegas a unique global brand. And on that note, I have here with me a former beauty queen, That's right. yes, um, a citizen advocate, and an yes. anesthesiologist. Yes. <laughs> Please help me welcome Dr. Annette Tijero. Thank you, Esmeralda, for having me here today. It's my pleasure to have you. I know you are running for Congress, That's but right. as a former beauty queen, uh, I, I would like to know your experience. So one of the things that happens in life is all of our experiences lead us to move on and forward into what we're doing now in the future. So when I um, competed for the title, the title that usually happens um, in the summer, and what was happening is not only do you complete obviously to be poised and to look good but you also have speech writing to do and delivery and community service and you also had to have a good uh, academic record and your title was miss nevada united teenager 1980. wow that's amazing yeah so that was quite a long time ago quite a long time ago but um, it doesn't really change i think that a lot of the pageants prepare women um, to be, have leadership roles and to learn to get along with people that they may meet for the very first time. As you know, when, whenever you're in a pageant, for a pageant that's that size, you at least have 49 other um, ladies that are also there. Buy, so, yeah. yeah, buying for the title. Exactly. Did winning a title provide you an opportunity to be heard? And what was your platform? So it, it does, and what it re really does for all of us is it provides an opportunity when you're in that leadership role to carry other things to the community. So you're invited to several kinds of different events, perhaps some um, nonprofit events, uh, perhaps some other leadership roles where younger women are looking um, to become um, more active in their community. So those are things that the Crown opens up to you. It also opens up your awareness because having 49 other women from other other states in the union kind of opens you up to finding out a little bit about every other state that you may or may not have visited. So it really does. It prepares you in a way that you start to meet different people, um, different cultures sometimes. Uh, so obviously there were some people that had Asian culture. There were some of, some of the queens that, that had Asian backgrounds. Um, it was just, it was a marvelous experience and I met so many other people just because you have the title. Lots of people want to meet you and find out what you're like too. So what do we have here? So this is memorabilia and if you can imagine someone who won a pageant in 1980, these are very old so they're antiques now. But this was the crown that was given to me at the time. So it's probably a little heavier than maybe some crowns today. But um, that was it. And you had to wear this all the time. All the time. You know yes. how that is. So you have to be, you have to have your hair prepared for it and you have to have it on. And you also have your sash here. I do, I have my sash. And most importantly on the sash, of course, it, it says what the title is. Mm -hmm. And there is a picture of me and the governor with me wearing my full outfit. And then every single one of us, because you have to wear different kinds of uh, you know, attire, your sash can move around a lot. So everybody so had a, a special pin. So since I was from Las Vegas, I had my little dice for the nice. pin for Las Vegas. So that was, that was the way that I held my sash in place um, for the whole time that I was queen. So uh, the other ladies kind of thought that that was unique. You know, they had their own kind of pins and things, but they thought this one was kind of unique. So, um, yeah, and of course you know that whenever you're wearing your crown, you have to act the best that you can, and you have to be as polite and wonderful as you can, even when people may not be so nice. Absolutely, you have to to be at your best. That's right, that's right. So that's one of the things of the pageant. And you were a teenager, exactly how old were you um, when you joined I was, the pageant? I was uh, 18 at the time, for most of the time during the pageant, um, because it's a, it's a one year title. So um, yeah, and I had just started UNLV through part of that. So it was, it was a, an interesting experience. Of course, obviously I didn't wear it every single day, but whenever I had um, any kind so of- So what motivated you to join the pageant? Um, you know what? Uh, I was sent the paperwork because of my scholastic achievements. Mm -hmm. So they sent an application and they wanted me to apply. 
and that's what motivated me to do it because it was just a step of something else to add to my experience. And what was that like winning the title? Um, the title? It was very exciting actually. It was very, very exciting. Um, you know, all, all of us that were there in the pageant, we all compete and of course everybody wants to win, but you never know what the judges are going to think, what they're going to like, what they're not going to like. What was your question? Like. Do you remember? No, I, I, I don't because a lot of what we did was uh, presentations and uh, speeches as well. And then we, we didn't do a lot of um, questions. It wasn't, you know, they, if there were questions, um, they were pretty spontaneous and, and everyone answered the same questions and they weren't, you know, they weren't really difficult questions. It just, you're nervous. You're, I remember that. You're very, very nervous. So you're kind of like, sometimes you, you feel like you're frozen in time when you get those questions. Um, how did it help you prepare for your education and career as a medical doctor? I know you're an anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, so, you know, one of the things that the pageant helped me do was to relate to people a little bit better. Um, because originally when I was very, very small, I was a very shy, quiet little girl. And the pageant allowed me to kind of open up a little bit more. Uh, and I always saw it as the opportunity to help people, which is really what I wanted. That's why I became a doctor, was to help people. Um, so that's, that was the educational part of it, too. And which of these experiences encourage you to pursue a political career? I know. Oh wow! Comments, you know, it, it is just career. it's um, it is an extension because what happens is I, I said to you I wanted to help people and since I wanted to help people, you know, the natural thing is to pick something that people need. So that's why I picked medicine. And then as I got into medicine and became an anesthesiologist, I found out that there were a lot of things on the government realm that impact the care of our patients. And I felt very strongly that the quality of our anesthesia care and the quality of health care in general depended sometimes on keeping government out of the personal decisions or making sure that government protected people from uh, third parties that may not have the patient's best interest at heart. So that's how I became involved. I became involved because I volunteered and was on quality assurance committees, pharmacy and therapeutic committees, things like that, that involved um, meetings and trying to work out policy. And then I was asked very early because of my activities to become involved in the medical society. And so I served for a very long time as a board of trustee member, obviously trying to make it so that um, healthcare was best in Clark County and in the state of Nevada. If elected, is there anything specific you would like to do for the Asian American community in Nevada? You know, I believe that all of our communities really want better education. We want opportunities for everybody. And I believe that the Asian community wants those as well. So when I think of our communities, I think of how rich our communities are, all the different things that we can bring together. And the best thing for everybody is we want to have stable incomes for our families. We want to have families that are united. And we want opportunities. So I would love to bring some of those opportunities, obviously, to the Asian community as well. I wish we had more time. But before I close this, I would like to ask you a final question. Sure. Uh, what pieces of advice or word of wisdom would you give to our global and local audience? Well, I, I would say that every single experience that you have in your life is important. Um, take everything with a positive thought and make every goal your dreams come true. That's amazing. You are amazing. Thank you, Dr. Annette Tahara, and thank you for watching in Vegas Vibes. Catch me again next time as I feature another amazing personality here in Nevada on Vegas Vibes. And I would like to thank Anna Billings of Anne Fontaine for my outfit today. They are located at the farm shops inside. Caesar's Palace. Thank you. God bless.